Hey, how's it going everyone? Welcome back to Kingfish Simple. So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving you guys the seven coolest fish to keep with your shrimp in an aquarium. So these are gonna be seven awesome fish to keep with shrimp in an aquarium. These are gonna be like a bit different and these are all gonna be pretty much fish that like are in more nano sized aquariums and like pretty much 10 gallons and under because often shrimp aren't kept in very large aquariums. So I've kept most of these fish with my cherry shrimp and my shrimp, I guess I should be saying, in general. I've kept them all in the past and I've had a lot of fun doing it. So I'm pretty much gonna make sure that you guys get as much information as possible and I'm gonna give you guys any disclaimers and things like that to make this as easy as possible for you guys. So make sure you stay around to the end of the video for the YouTube algorithm and consider liking this video, but also so that you guys see all of the seven fish and without any further ado, let's get started. So the first fish on my list to keep with your shrimp in your aquarium is gonna be the Dwarf Neon Rainbow. So I've raved on about these guys in a million other videos if you guys wanna learn a bit more about them. It's a video up here, this is gonna be like a care guide. I've actually been breeding them for the past couple of months and I've had so much fun keeping them. So they are a rainbow fish. They're from like the Northern Australian region, which doesn't really matter at all. These guys are definitely not like a beginner fish. I wouldn't recommend keeping them if you've only been keeping fish for a short amount of time or if you haven't had much experience keeping fish these are definitely something for you guys who are a bit more intermediate and things like that these guys are like a dwarf fish so they stay about really small I think under two inches if I'm right and they are an awesome community fish because they're really peaceful so these guys can be a little bit more finicky than some of the other fish and it's important that you guys understand this because they aren't gonna be like very tolerable with really bad water conditions and really bad fluctuations and things like that but they do provide this beautiful blue iridescent display it's just like unmatched to a lot of other fish and they have really good personality. So these guys are a schooling fish. They will like to be in schools of over six. I wouldn't recommend keeping them in schools of under six because they go a bit weird. They like to be in schools and makes them feel secure and stuff like that, who am I to judge? And these guys do like a pH of like over seven. So I keep mine at about a 7.8 pH. But yeah, they do school. I definitely recommend keeping them in a 10 gallon tank with your shrimp. But if you guys have six of them, I wouldn't recommend keeping anything except for the shrimp and these guys in there because otherwise you will overstock your tank. And then the second fish on my list which I only just really got into again I hadn't kept these guys for about four years up until now is the neon tetra so these are gonna be a really really good fish for a lot of people to add to their shrimp aquarium. So these guys are a small tetra. They are a schooling fish, so they like to be in schools of about eight to 10, and they are super easy to take care of. So these guys are a very resilient fish. They were in my first ever aquarium that I kept with some guppies and things like that. They were a super peaceful fish, and they were a great add to those aquariums. So like I said, they like to be in groups of about eight to 10. I definitely recommend keeping them in like that 10 gallon tank. Keeping them in a school is gonna be really important, but the best thing about these guys is they are very affordable. So they're not gonna be crazy expensive like the rainbows that I just talked about these guys stay very very cheap you can get about eight to ten of them for like under 20 bucks and they have that beautiful blue line and the red coloring it's just like crazy so because they have small mouths they're not going to be able to fit any shrimp or anything like that in their mouth and they also wouldn't really go for them they're a very peaceful fish so another really cool fish to add to your aquarium and then the third fish on this list is going to be probably the best fish to keep with these guys obviously this list is not in order but this is going to be the endless so the endless are basically the guppies but like a smaller version and they are a live bear so they give birth to live young so if you guys keep them in like a 10 gallon tank I'd recommend getting like a trio of these guys and then adding them and they're gonna do a really good job of breeding and stuff like that you don't really need to get a lot of these guys at the start because they're just gonna breed like nuts it's not even funny how much these guys breed the endless are in my opinion one of the best beginner fish out there and they're gonna be super easy to take care of because they're a life bearer they don't need any specific water parameters they are a tropical fish so they normally do like a bit of a warmer temperature and the reason I say that they're one of the best fish to take care of like if you're a beginner is because they are still like very very wild ish so they don't have like heaps of inbreeding problems and inbreeding ramifications and things like that so they don't have a lot of issues and often you don't have bent spines and things like that like the guppies do so these guys are going to be a really good pick if you're looking for like a live bearer and the best thing about these guys in a cherry shrimp tank is they are smaller so they can't fit anything into their mouth and I've kept these guys with the shrimp in the past it's just been an absolute wonder because they've been so easy to keep with them and the other thing is they're also community fish so they don't go after them and things like that so you don't have to worry about any of that stuff and then the next fish on this list so fish number four is going to be the threadfin rainbow so this again is going to be from the same family as the dwarf neon rainbow which i mentioned at the start of the video now i've actually never kept these guys i'm definitely looking into it because these guys have like an incredible display i only really just like kind of uncovered them again and i'm really really interested in keeping them now because they have this awesome threadfin display they are very similar to the dwarf neon rainbow in care and all that kind of stuff 
So they're definitely not a beginner fish, but these are more of like a centerpiece kind of fish. So if you guys are looking for something to keep in a smaller like 10 gallon aquarium or 20 gallon aquarium, two or three or four of these guys, it's gonna be really, really good. If you're gonna keep them in like a 10 gallon aquarium, I'd recommend keeping like two of these guys or three of these guys at most. You could be like really pushing it there, but if you've got like a bigger aquarium, like a 20 gallon aquarium, it's gonna be perfect for these guys. So I just had to mention these because they're a really peaceful fish. They're also super cool looking. So just something I mentioned because they are something that's gonna be a little bit more different than other lists that you see on YouTube and things like that. So I kind of wanted to make this video a little bit different and I just added this fish to this list because of that. And then the next fish on the list is gonna be the Corydoris. So the reason I say the Corydoris is because these guys are super peaceful and they also stay along the bottom of the aquarium. So they kind of work with these guys. And to kind of like narrow it down a bit more, I definitely recommend keeping something like the Pygmy Corydoris in an aquarium with some shrimp in there because the Pygmy Corydoris obviously are a little bit smaller and they're gonna just be a little bit better in the aquarium. But nonetheless, you guys can keep albino Corydoris and bronze and things like that in the aquarium and they're gonna do absolutely fine. These guys are a schooling fish, so you don't have to keep them in large groups, but you can keep them in like groups of three or four and they're gonna go along the bottom of the aquarium and they're gonna sift through the gravel and things like that. Now, I have to mention it, they're like aquariums with really fine gravel or sand in them because they're gonna injure their barbels if they don't have that. They have really coarse gravel and things like that. So I just had to mention that, but these guys are a really cool ad. They stay very small and they're also really peaceful. So they're not gonna go after shrimp and things like that. And I've kept them with shrimp in the past and I haven't had any issues at all, so. And then the next fish on this list is gonna be the Chili Rasbora. So these guys are part of obviously the Rasbora family. They're very similar to the Harlequin Rasbora and things like that, but they're a little bit more different and that's why I added them to this list. So they stay a little bit smaller than the Harlequin Rasbora. But again, these guys are an awesome fish to add to a cherry shrimp aquarium or a shrimp aquarium in general, I should say. These guys have, in my opinion, a bit of a better display, but they're super hard to find in my area. So I don't know about a lot of the other areas in the world. I don't know about the pricing and things like that, but I do know that they're a very, very similar fish to the Harlequin Rasbora in care and stuff like that. So if you guys are looking for something that's definitely a little bit different, these guys school so you can make a really cool display with them and they're gonna be an awesome add to an aquarium with some shrimp in there because they're not gonna be aggressive and they also have really small mouths. So they can't fit any shrimp in their mouth and they can't create any havoc in the aquarium. And then fish number seven, the last fish on this list is gonna be the bristlenose. So I could get a bit of flack for this, but I've added this fish here for a few reasons. So I definitely recommend keeping these guys in like a 20 gallon aquarium if you're gonna add a few, but if you've got one, they'll be fine in a 10 gallon aquarium. But there are a few reasons why I added this fish to the list. So basically the bristlenose pleco is gonna be a fish that's gonna clean the glass of the aquarium. So they're often sold like to beginners as like a cleaning fish. Now these guys aren't like a cleaning fish. They do clean a lot of surface algae off of ornaments and off the glass and driftwood and plants and things like that, but they don't clean the aquarium. So cherry shrimp do eat algae and things like that, but they're not going to be able to clean the glass because they can't really get like a grasp on it. So often you'll have to resort to like scraping the aquarium and making sure that it's clean and scrubbing it and stuff like that. But the bristlenose plecos do an absolutely awesome job of making sure none of that stuff grows on there. And if there is any that grows on there, they do love to eat it. So I've had aquariums like the ones you see behind me. It's just got covered in that surface algae and I've added a bristle nose in there and within a week it's become clean again and the glass is absolutely spotless. So I thought I'd add this in here because they're gonna do a really good job at like balancing out the aquarium and making sure that none of that stuff grows. In my opinion, they are a really cool fish. They're super easy to take care of and they're just gonna be a really, really good add to your cherished aquarium. So normally I've seen on like lots of forums and stuff like that where people say they're like killers and stuff like that. Guys, these guys are herbivorial. They're not gonna wanna eat protein and things like that. So if you guys see these guys sucking on like a dead shrimp or something like that, they didn't kill the shrimp. The chances are the shrimp died and they're just eating at the corpse or whatever. It's completely normal for that to happen. These guys aren't like gonna hunt shrimp or anything like that. They just eat whatever they can find. So basically that was the list. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you guys learned something today. This was a bit of an interesting list to make because I didn't want to keep it too basic. I wanted to make it a little bit different and give you guys some really cool ideas and things that I would add to your shrimp aquarium. So thanks so much for watching this video guys. I really do appreciate it and I'll see you guys in the next one.